Welcome to my video. If you're an old time YouTube user, you're going to notice that everyone has these fantastic intros these days because you know it's all about glitz and glamour. I don't know. So here's mine. <laughs> Good day everyone, welcome to my pool maintenance video. Uh, possibly you're here just for general knowledge or you're having some sort of issue. So I'm going to tell you a few things here. I'm going to keep it very simple. Anyone can understand this because I'm not going to talk about all the complicated terms, all the different ways to test your water for this and that and that and this. And I want to also appear on the video because, you know, because, you know, I have some gray hair and, you know, receding hairline, so... I'm older, so I must know what I'm talking about, right? But anyway, uh, I did take care of a uh, commercial pool for a couple years successfully. And uh, commercial pools are very, uh, they can become complex with uh, chemistry and whatnot. But we're going to talk about predominantly the seasonal type pool, the ones that have the inflatable rings or just the metal tubing outside that's kind of set up and uh, get them running uh, every summer. That's what we're really going to focus on here. I'm going to keep this super simple, so please stick around and we'll let it roll. And P.S. Probably the other reason you're here, you just, you're frustrated. Your pool water is not clear. And if your pool water is not clear, you have problems. And honestly, I, I looked after pools. I will not get into a public pool or a private pool if the water is not clear. It needs to be crystal clear. If it's not, there's an issue. And that issue can be uh, fairly benign or it can be serious and there could be consequences. So uh, stick around, we're gonna cover it. So here's my pool and, you know, I purposely left it in a little bit of a state of disrepair I left it for three days just so I could make this video for you. I'm not sure on the surface. You can see there's a lot of things floating. These little pools that have the, uh, you know, the inflatable uh, top or the any small pool like this, they don't have a normal skimmer, which would normally take off debris off the top. So the first thing that you need to do, and you don't need anything fancy, get yourselves one of these nets. I'll demo this after. You don't even need the long pole. Uh, you know, you see on shows, the pool boy has the big long pole, pole and he's scooping out the pool. You don't need the pole, just buy the ant. They're cheap. Okay, and if you have one of these, this looks pretty familiar. You have your little pump there, and uh, I can't stress, especially in the beginning, you need to clean that filter out every day. Don't be lazy. That's part of the biggest problem of pool maintenance and people wonder why the pool looks terrible. It's because they're lazy and they don't get out and they don't take care of it. So what we're going to do, we're going to clean out the filter on here. I'll show you how to do that properly. And a little tip, the reason I have a bucket here, because you want to take this pump, and for this pool anyway, it gets it up high enough where when I take the lid off, it's not going to uh, drain all the water out of the pool. But let me go unplug it first, then we'll carry on. Okay, I unplugged it and first thing, take off the cover. So again, it's up high enough, so it's not gonna, the water's not gonna come pouring out of the pool. Remove your filter. Okay, and we're just, I'm just going to set this aside for a sec. And then, there's going to be a lot of dirty stuff in here just from removing the filter. Take this, just drop it down here for a sec. Rinse it out, just lower it down, it'll drain on, all on its own, flush it out. Sorry, it's hard to manage the camera. So let's, uh, I'll go get set up and I'll show you how to clean one of these out properly. You could do this inside or I just do mine outside with the garden hose. I'll get it set up. 
Okay, so this is the uh, typical filter out of one of these pools. Some of them are bigger. This is a small one. I'm just going to show you how to clean this out. I'm just going to use the garden hose. You want to start spraying on the outside to wash all the big stuff off. And finish it off by putting your hose and into the inside and just going around in circles. I'm just going to show you. And put it in the inside like this. Rotate it around a few times. And there you go. Now in each of my videos I like to always give you money saving tips, okay? I think I have about three for this one. The first one is this filter, I know it kind of looks a little bit gross, still looks kind of dirty. I have a lot of iron in my water, so I, this is well water in my pool. So it looks a little bit gross, but there's nothing wrong with the filter. Uh, this filter is two years old. They try to sell you filters and tell you to, you know, keep buy, 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 just buy a new filter each time. But this one's been going for two years. I just rinse it out. So it's all good. So that's my first money saving tip. All right, let's get to the next stage. So let's talk about the easiest way for chlorine management. You can see I have three different things here. Uh, this is not in my pool right now. This is not part of my pool right now either, but I'll tell you about them in a second. So fortunately for me, in my pool, this particular filter, it has a, a mesh screen down in the bottom there. So it goes about halfway in. And the easiest way to uh, chlorinate your pool is to use, they're called miniature uh, chlorine pucks and you can buy like a whole bucket of them. This is what they look like. They're like this big and they fit in there. Now a pool this size probably um, honestly two a day, I would start out with two a day for sure and then check uh, each day. We'll get into a little bit of pool testing uh, as far as chlorine goes in a second but uh, trust me, for a pool this size, uh, two of these a day, a smaller pool, probably just one will do you. And that's how easy that part is. Now if your filter does not have that little mesh in there, uh, if you go to your pool store, sometimes you can find little gadgets like this. Now I'm not sure if it was designed for this, but what you would do at the bottom of your pool pump you would just set this in place. So basically if it fits in this diameter nicely on the bottom of this filter, you'd set it in there. And that's basically gonna stop the chlorine tablet from you know, going directly into the pump, which is gonna cause some trouble. I don't know, I hope that's clear. The other option is my other pool had this nice little feature this would be in the inside of the pool under you know underwater where the water is and what i used to do this cap would like this is for the either that doesn't matter either the intake or the out it had these caps on it and this was really convenient if your pool is like this you can just put a couple of uh, those chlorine tablets in there i mean this would be stuck in the pool like this and then put a few tablets in there i always put it on the intake side because it was you know with the suction and then I just pop it on and screw it back together. That will give you the same, uh, same result. So let's move on and I'll show you how to uh, put the filter back into the pump and make sure that it's going to work properly for you. Okay, so in my case, since I left my pool for about three days, I put three tablets in here. As I said, it'd be good to start out with at least one a day. Clean your filter every day. You'll notice the tablet's probably gone. And, uh, so we're just going to put this in. And you notice they, these, these caps, they have this vent on here. I never use my vent. Uh, that's to get the water out, but I'm going to show you the easy way to do it. Just save yourself a lot of hassle. So I have my filter in there. We'll tighten this down. Looks good. Let's go plug her in. Okay, and I purposely left it up on the uh, bucket here. I'm not sure how much the sound is going to come through on the speaker, but 
Right now you can hear the pump, it's like making a noise. Here, I'll put it close. If your pump is making that noise, that means that there's air in there. And normally you would use this top vent to get the air out. And of course it has to be down low at ground level to do that. But what I do, rather than messing around with it and having water all coming out, I just take my filter unit and I set it down like this. Basically the, the air that's in, in the canister is getting pushed out and coming up through here and out. So just know where the in, which is the intake and which is the out. The output, make sure it's pointed upwards. Shake it around a bit. All the air is going to come out. And uh, yeah, there you go. We're done. So we took care of that. So the next question is, how do I test my chlorine? I mean, you can buy all these fancy uh, kits, you know, they have little tubes and uh, little bottles of liquid you have to put certain number of drops in and, you know, it's, they work, but honestly, if you're doing what my suggestions are, you're not going to have to test your water that often, trust me. Just might be out of curiosity at a certain point. But what I do recommend, you can get these uh, pool test strips. Uh, I'm not endorsing any brand again. You know, they have all these different measurements and this stuff does, it is important, but generally speaking for a seasonal pool, you're really not going to have a lot of issues and it's really the chlorine levels that you want to make sure, you know, are adequate to kill the bacteria. And if you didn't have any of these, the indications are, if you're putting too much chlorine into your pool, you're going to smell chlorine. It's going to stink. Your pool should not stink like chlorine. Simple as that. You might be used to public pools and they will have a heavy chlorine smell. Your clothing or bathing suit will smell after. That's because they, they seriously, they over chlorinate and there's reasons for that, but we won't get into that. So let's just, uh, and how do you use these strips? Most of them are, you just basically take the strip, dip it in uh, just for two seconds and bring it up and shake it off. And then look at the colors on here and compare them uh, to what's on the bottle here. I'm going to su assume my chlorine is low, but let's find out. I'm not sure if you'll be able to see the color on here on the video. Maybe if I get into the sun here. Okay, so I'm going to dip this in. And shake it off. And you have to read this within about 10 seconds. Now mine is still in the okay range, but it's at the bottom end. Oh, I don't even know if you saw it. So anyways, I dipped it in shook it off, set it like this, and you have to read it within 10 seconds, it's already starting to disappear, but it was in this uh, very light, I guess, uh, purplish range, which is still in the okay, so that was good. So I came out just in time, and it will boost the levels up uh, over the next day here. Very simple, and these aren't too expensive, and you don't need to do this every day. I do this like once a week now, because I kind of know how things work. Okay, so one thing I noticed after several days, it hasn't rained here, it's been very hot. Uh, my pool water level is a little bit low, I can tell, because normally the ring, you know, for the inflatable ones, you can see it's, it's low, it should be up here. So I'll add some water, and just keep in mind, when you add water, that's going to lower your chlorine level, so make sure you have some chlorine tabs in your filter before you add a bunch of water. Secondly is, with these blow-up ones, I think the metal top frame ones, they have certain qualities which are better than this. They both have certain qualities. Uh, the metal ringed ones probably are better as long, but you have to make sure that the ground is very flat and it's very even. The uh, blow up ring type like this, it's a little bit more forgiving uh, if the ground is uneven as far as the pool goes. But anyways, I'm going to give you some really good advice here this blow up ring inflate this thing when it's not out in the sun I mean you can inflate it when it's in the sun but come back after the temperature has gone down you know to a low for your day and when it's out of the sun and reinflate it and how much do you inflate the ring 
Well, there's a little thing that you pull out, just like, uh, you know, all kinds of inflatables you can buy. Same on this. Um, honestly, the best way to do this is to use your mouth and blow on it and blow the air in there as hard as you can. And that way it's going to stay inflated, especially at night when the temperatures really drop. Because what happens if it's not inflated properly and if the pool, especially if the pool is uh, quite full... I'm just going to show you this for demo purposes. Hopefully this is going to work out. But what happens is it deflates and then it starts falling down. And if it doesn't have proper inflation, the water will start pouring out the side. And if it's not inflated well, once that starts happening, it's just going to be a free for all and your, like your pool will totally drain out. I've had that happen. So make sure this ring is really well inflated. Don't overdo it. Inflate it when it's cold. That's all I can say or follow up if you see that it's kind of, if it's not, if it's floppy or whatever, you got to keep that inflated or else you're going to lose all the water out of your pool. And that's my cost saving tip because it's going to cost you a lot of money to fill up your pool again, maybe. All right. And another final thought here. So basically, as I said, go and buy one of these, these nets here and people go all crazy to go like, well, there's stuff in the bottom of the pool. I, you know, there's some dirt down there. I got to buy one of those expensive vacuum things. And, oh, no, save your money. You don't need one of those. I was going to buy one. But then I realized if I got in my pool with this gnat here, held it with my hand, went in circles. It also stirred up anything on the bottom. And I just keep going around in circles. And voila, the problem is solved. If there's any fine dirt in there, it gets mixed up, and then the filter's going to take that out. Um, I, I know my pool looks like a little bit dirty right now because I've left it for three days. I mean, it's full of, you know, bugs and some leaves. And, but I'm going to jump in there in a bit. I'll take care of that. It'll take me like 10 minutes, and uh, voila. So don't buy fancy skimmers and suction things and whatever. You don't need them. Well, I hope you enjoyed the video. It means so much to me if you uh, at least give me a like or a thumbs up uh, on the YouTube channel. Uh, subscribe if you like. I have a whole host of videos. My channel is really weird because it's all about how to do's and it's it varies so much. So it's, it's not like a normal channel. So a lot of people, I mean, I have a, a good number of subscribers, but a lot of people just come, they get their information, then they leave. But you know what? You should subscribe because I cover things that are going to uh, prop up or come up in your daily life. That's what my channel is all about. So hopefully you subscribe. I hope you enjoyed the video. And again, I mean, it's so easy to take care of a pool. But be cautious if this, if you're having issues. Uh, seek some help. Uh, do some more reading, especially if you're having issues. Like if you ever have, you know, rashes on your skin or your eyes are burning. That should not happen. There's there's greater issues going on there than what I can explain in this video. And so you should seek some help if that's happening. Um, but anyways, thank you very much for watching. Take care.